Alright guys, welcome back to another video and a shootout from the Strymon Flint V2 and the White Whale V2 from Crazy Tube Circuits. So it is a battle of a digital but very well loved and known tremolo and reverb and an all analog one. So what we'll do is straight away we'll cut to sort of a bunch of riffs and um, you know varying in tremolo and reverb amount uh, between these two pedals. Then we'll take a closer look at the White Whale, go over the tremolos, the different controls, uh, the volume and all that sort of thing. Uh, and then I'll come back and kind of share some of my thoughts on this and um, yeah, just go over it. So I will see you after we've done that. Alright then, so let's just take a little bit of a closer look at the uh, the White Whale. 
and um, this is the dry sand we've got kind of thing, just a slightly edge of breaker. Dry sand. So bringing in the reverb, let's put everything at 12 o'clock. You've got this sort of sound. So you'll probably notice that got louder. And that's because of this volume control just at the top. So I'm finding that unity is around nine or 10 o'clock, so. But of course, because that's only nine, 10 o'clock, we've got a long way to go. So if we crank it. Hopefully you could hear that. That is a massive amount of volume. So you can kind of emulate the sound of a, of a tube driven analog spring reverb by you know without having an overdrive pedal running into it but i would for me i would just keep it at unity gain which as i say is around about sort of 10 o'clock so let's look at the long short and medium preset just here then so i've got it in long uh, long at the moment let's go down to medium and then short. Long. So you can see there's a fairly big difference between, uh, between long and short. But what I like to do is this uh, dwell control at the top is essentially just a, a, a sort of more fine tuned version of these three settings. So I find it's much better to leave it on the long if I bring the dwell to nothing, that's almost like having it on short, but even a bit shorter. But if we bring that up, into the max, I find that's a much better way to control it. So I could do away with the long, short, and medium, to be fair. So let's just say we leave that there. And while we're on the length, a lot of people say with this pedal that one thing you're not going to get is the very, very cavernous, long, infinite delays. And that is true. If we crank the mix up, we're on long, maximum dwell. Let's see what we've got now kind of thing. And compare that to the flint just off camera a second. If I put that on, it's uh, maximum decay and all that sort of stuff. Back to this one. So hopefully you can hear there, there's, you know, the, the flint will go a lot longer. But what I like about this mix control is that when it is dialed in at its maximum, you're still getting the immediacy of the note, but the reverb comes on immediately. If you dial that back, actually, let's go single notes. It's probably a better way to explain what I mean. The reverb's coming on every single note straight away. If I back the mix off, it's really only kind of hanging on to the notes that get left alone. And I think that's really cool because on the Strymon and with a lot of other digital delays, if you put the mix on full, I know it's off camera, but you'll be able to hear it. Past about two o'clock, you just get, um, you don't get any attack of the note at all. It, it kind of fades the, the, the notes in, if you like. So that's still going to have the attack, mix on full, the attack goes away. Whereas with this, you're always going to have the attack. But you can just control, you know, how in the way it is really. That's, that's kind of what I would describe this mix knob as. It's, it's how fast does the reverb kind of grab the note you're playing. And I find that I find that very, very usable and um, and a cool control to have. And then lastly on the reverb, it's just the tone. So 
But I've always liked having a tone control on reverbs because any reverb I've used in the past, which is all digital ones, I find they can get very, very bright. Whereas this thing, tone all the way off, tone all the way up. I don't think this is a particularly harsh and bright reverb anyway. So it's a very fine, subtle control over the, over the high end of the reverb. So let's have a little look at the tremolo side then. So start off in its tube mode. And the first thing I want to say about this tremolo on this side is that I would say on the speed knob here, from, from its starting point up to about here-ish, so about there, it is just super fine control over very low speed tremolo. And I think that's awesome and something that's missing on a lot of tremolos is the slower speeds, you know, how, how well can you dial in the slower speeds? This thing is great at it. And then the faster speed kind of comes all at once at the top end. And you can see you can get very slow if you wanted to. So let's put that back up to about there. And I'm going to come to a criticism of the tremolo here because you've got three tremolos. You've got tube, optical and harmonic. And if I flip between the tube and optical, I'll even put the intensity on full to exaggerate it. I'm sure you're probably struggling to hear a difference between those two. They sound exactly the same. So the point where I wondered if I had a slightly duff unit, but I've gone back on a lot of other videos because a lot of videos are out on this already. And actually they are both very, very similar. And the only noticeable difference between them, depending on how you've got your amp set, is that the tube is ever so slightly warmer. If I just focus on bass notes here. <laughs> But it's very, very subtle. So that has to come in as a criticism. It's, it's for me, it's a, it's still a two, you know, two tremolo choice. You've got that, and then you've got the harmonic, which is a very, very nice. Let's lower the intensity. And I prefer it on its, um, harder mode, which you've just done, but this is the softer mode now. Harder. Bring the intensity up. And just very, very quickly comparing that to the Strymon off cameras harmonic. So to me, although not quite as fat as the Strymon, uh, which is nice if you go more for a uni vibe throb thing, I must admit, but I do very much so like the, uh, the harmonic tremolo uh, on this side as well. And then the last thing to look at is once again, we've got a volume, so. With once again, masses amounts of uh, decibelage <laughs> to add to the volume. Again, I'm finding sort of nine or 10 o'clock on this is about unity volume. Always a nice touch to have a volume on a tremolo so that you can account for any 
any kind of losses you get because depending on the rest of your pedals, your amp, a tremolo is always going to act very, very differently. So to have a volume on there is a nice thing to account for. And the, other, the only other control on the front is the pre and post, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just whether the tremolo is before uh, or after the reverb. And actually, I think with harmonic tremolo, harmonic tremolo in particular, you always get a teeny bit of a, of a better result for some reason if you go post, but but in general, I would prefer to have the uh, the tremolo in the pre. So let's uh, let's go back up top then and. Um, go over kind of a bit more about the back of the pedal and uh, features within that that way as well as some thoughts so I'll see you in a sec. So there you go then you've heard a little bit about uh, how this pedal sounds uh, compared to the flint let me know what you think and by the way if you are looking at um, you know swapping a flint to this getting rid of digital going analog but you're worried about the size if I bring them two together hopefully you can kind of get a good idea of the actual size between them. So the uh, white whale is a teeny tiny bit taller than the flint, uh, but not by a lot, but it is about twice as wide. So it's considerably bigger than the flint, but don't forget the flint is a very, very, very small pedal as are the Strymon form factor sort of thing. Very clever little form factor. Uh, but looking at the white whale, you might have noticed the controls uh, on the back. So these two just here, that's your in just there and that's your out. So the controls in the middle, this one just here, allows you to plug an expression pedal into the reverb and that'll act then as a blend. So you can bring in the reverb uh, on a blend. And this one on the tremolo side, you have two uses for that. Either it can be like a rake, again, with the expression pedal, uh, or you can set a tap tempo um, with a, you know an external switch to set the, uh, the, the tempo of the tremolo. So massive amounts of versatility on this analog pedal straight away. This one here though is for the remote. So that essentially takes these two foot switches, puts them on a remote so you can then put it wherever you want. And I think that aside from being a good usability thing, I think the reason, the main reason why that's there, and this brings me to my first question mark, I suppose, about this pedal, is because if you aren't stepping on these switches all the time, because you've got the remote, you're way less likely to break this pedal. And if I just bring it to the mic, hopefully you can hear. Can you hear how kind of loose and stuff that spring tank inside is? And obviously it's supposed to be like that, but it does, it does have a, a kind of sense of fragility uh, to it especially if you're used to digital pedals, you know, which just work forever, pretty much, you know, they're all, all right, well, they're less likely to break uh, than an all analog pedal. So I'm not massively concerned about it. It's got a real spring tank in, it's supposed to make noises. If you hit it, it will go through to the pedal. But I was surprised at just how kind of fragile in the hand it feels. And in a live environment with this thing uh, on the floor, especially if you're quite kind of bunched up together, I think it's so sensitive that just a drummer will set your reverb off. So, you know, I haven't tested that, but that's how sensitive it feels. Maybe when you've got it isolated on a board, uh, it won't kind of get through, but it, it just does feel very, very uh, loose kind of thing inside. So that's definitely something to watch out for. But in terms of the actual sound of this, I'm not sure how good of a job I've done at capturing it you know, recording subtle differences like this is, is an art of its own kind of thing. But in the room, the spring reverb in this, the real spring reverb, to me is way more kind of inspiring and musical sounding than the great digital emulation in this. And like I said, if you want that really long cavernous style reverb, the Strymon definitely, you know, is the one. And if you don't want that to be a spring, Again, benefits of digital, you've got you've got a plate and a hall in this as well. You've got three different reverbs. So obviously, when you're gonna talk about versatility and stuff, although I think this is exceptionally versatile and very, very well thought out, you're never gonna get more versatile than you know a digital product, something like a Flint 
or something, you know, like a multi-effects that has every possible type of reverb. But if you're more concerned about the inspiration, the tone, the musicality of the little things you do have, for me, I found the White Whale to be to be way better and pretty much similar story uh, on the tremolo side of it as well. Other than the fact that between the tube and optical, I feel there is almost no difference. Like to me, this is a two, you know, a two in one tremolo, not really a three. The tube does warm up a little bit more, but in terms of the tone and the character, they're both to me pretty much the same. Whereas again, with the Flint and others like it, it's three very distinct types of tremolo. Uh, and on the harmonic, I preferred the sound of this pedal. However, if you're using a harmonic trem to kind of get a more pseudo univibe, throbby, fat sound, which is a great sound, I do actually think that the harmonic on the Strymon um, is a little bit closer to that. It just has a bit more bottom end pulse to it, um, but not by a lot, you know, it, this thing still has that. I just think the Strymon edges it a little bit for that very specific type of harmonic tremolo. Uh, but, but on the whole, me again, personally, I thought this was the more musical sounding tremolo. And the way they dialed in the speed control so that the vast majority of the sweep is giving you different flavours of slower trem modulation. I love that. I think that works uh, perfectly kind of thing. And then... I kind of realised after I'd done all of that, well, what about both together? What about both re reverb on reverb? So I'll cut in a clip now of just how that sounded. I just had reasonably thick amounts uh, on both and combined them together. Uh, and I think both sounded possibly even better than either do on their own. So have a listen to this. <laughs> So what did you think of uh, both of them together? And then I, I wound up the uh, the volume on the one and used the control, you know, the control on the guitar to to push it kind of thing for the for the little solo bit. And I, I thought that just sounded amazing. So I'm not suggesting for a minute that you need both of these pedals. That's ridiculous. But I won't be selling uh, the Flint in favour of the White Whale. I definitely feel that I personally have a use uh, for both pedals. But I do prefer, if we're talking one to one, which we kind of are in this video, I do prefer uh, the White Whale. So let me know what you think. I've only had this for a day or so. So obviously I'm going to get to know it a lot more and you guys will hear it uh, a lot more. And I will see you in the next video.